Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to today's children's message for January 29th, 2023. Unit 18, our new unit, The People Prepare, Session 1, Esther Saves Her People, from the book of Esther. Well, hello, friends, and welcome back. We are starting our new unit, The People Prepare. You know, God had made good on his promise to bring his people back into the land, but they were still waiting on another promise. For God to send the ultimate rescuer, you know? God's people began to prepare for the Messiah's arrival. But even so, <clears throat> as always, they couldn't escape the temptation for sin, of sin. But you know, I'm so glad that we have the Bible and we can study God's word together. And what's great about the Bible is that you can read it again and again and still learn something new. Our story today is maybe is one you may have heard before, but even if that is the case, there's still something I know God wants you to wants to show you. You know, the story of Esther is a beautiful reminder of God's faithful love for his people and his commitment to protect and provide for them. The Jews had been sinning against God and and had been sent into exile in Babylon. You know, we all sin when we disobey God and his commands. So how should we feel when we sin? This is our big, our new big picture question, and we'll answer it over the next few, few weeks. How should we sin? How should we feel when we sin? When we sin, we should feel sorry that we have disobeyed God and want to turn from our sin because we love him. Yeah, we should want to turn. We should want to do good because he loves us. You know, God's love for his people is not dependent on on our, our their ability to obey him perfectly. The good news for us, because none of us are perfect. No, the Bible tells us that we all fall short of God's glory, but we are forgiven because Jesus died on the cross to take the punishment we deserve. God's people knew about God's promise to send a rescuer for them by, from, from their sin by sending the Messiah. But that promise hadn't been fulfilled yet. The people returned to Judah and rebuilt the temple and the walls around Jerusalem. But the Jews, especially those who remained in Persia, still had plenty of enemies. And today we will hear a story about an evil plan to destroy the Jews but God had a plan to rescue them. So let's get ready to learn about how God planned to rescue them in our Bible story. Esther saved her people. This is the picture for her. Esther saved her people. It's in the Old Testament in the book of Esther. Now King Azarasi was the king of Persia. And many years earlier when Cyrus was king. He sent some of God's people back to Judah to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And another group of God's people stayed in Persia. God's people were called Jews because they were from Judah. And the king of Persia chose Esther to be a queen. But Esther did not tell the king that she was a Jew. And one day Mordecai heard that Haman, an important leader, who worked for the king, was planning to kill all the Jews. Mordecai was upset. He was a Jew. He didn't want all the people he loved to be killed. So Mordecai and all the Jews cried. And here's the other thing. Mordecai was Esther's uncle. And Esther didn't know what was wrong. So she, she sent a messenger to Mordecai to ask why all the Jews were so upset. And Mordecai told Esther about Haman's evil plan. You have to do something, Mordecai said. Ask the king to stop Haman. Ask him to save the Jewish people. And Esther sent back a message to, to Mordecai. No one can approach the king unless the king calls for that person first, Esther said. Otherwise, the punishment is death. Unless the king holds his scepter, and then you may live. You are a Jew, 
Mordecai said, if you don't stop Haman, he will kill you too. Maybe this is why you are the queen. Maybe God put Esther <clears throat> in the palace to save her people. Esther asked Mordecai and the Jews to fast and pray for her for three days. Then Esther would go to the king, even if it meant she might die. So on the third day, Esther went to the king. He saw Esther, and he held out his golden scepter. What is it, Queen Esther? The king asked. What do you want to ask of me? I'll give you anything up to half my kingdom. <laughs> Esther said, Would you and Haman come to a feast today? So Haman and the king went to Esther's feast. After eating, the king said, What do you want, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything at all, up to half my kingdom. Come to my feast tomorrow, Esther said, and the king agreed. And the next day, Haman and the king went to Esther's feast. After eating, the king said, What do you want, Queen Esther? I'll give you anything up to half of my kingdom. And Esther spoke up. You know, king, there is a plan to kill me and my people. And the king said, Who was responsible for this plan? This evil enemy, Haman. Esther said, and the king was angry, he was so angry. He punished Haman and made a law to keep the Jewish people safe from their enemies. Isn't that great? So how do, you know, we think about that. Let's think about this story. You know, Esther listened. Esther listened to Mordecai's message and learned of Haman's plan. Do we ever stop our busyness to just stop and listen? And then Esther prayed. She prayed and she asked Mordecai and all the Jewish people to, to pray for her, to pray to God. She knew it was a dangerous situation, but she didn't let her that stop her. So she asked them all to fast and pray so that God, so that they would hear what God wanted to do. And then Esther obeyed. She made the decision to follow God and go to the king on the behalf of her people, even if it meant that she might die. So this kind of leads us to our Christ connection. It may seem like everything around us is spinning out of control for God's people. In reality, you know, God was in control over Haman's evil plan to destroy the Jews. God had placed Esther in that position to be able to help her people and lead, plead with the king to have mercy on them. Haman's wicked plan was uncovered and the Jews were saved. Like Haman, Satan wants to ruin God's plan and destroy believers. Satan thought he had won when Jesus died on the cross. But then God raised Jesus from the dead and defeated Satan once and for all. You know, all who believe in Jesus are rescued from sin and death. And one day, Jesus will return and he will ease all the effects of sin and we will no longer be captive to our sin. Jesus will set us free and we will live in perfect peace with God. So let me do something that I will have Uncle Ben come help us with. You see, I have two cups here. Uncle Ben, if you want to hold this cup. So we have two cups, and I'm going to put some water in this cup. And I'll put some water in my cup. And, oh, can you see Uncle Ben here? And he's going to have Uncle Ben turn around for a minute so he can't see us. So he's going to turn around. Uncle Ben's going to turn around. And what I want him to do later is to put that cup on his head. But Uncle Ben's going to close his eyes now and turn around. Okay, now, this is what I want you to do. Uncle Ben, open your eyes. We're both going to take our cups. And we're going to flip them on top of our heads. Do you trust me? 
Okay. Okay, so ready? We're on the count of three. One, two, three. We're going to put them over our heads. Uh, <laughs> so, he trusted me. Thank you, Uncle Ben. <laughs> In the demonstration, Uncle Ben had to trust me that he wasn't going to end up pouring water all over his head. You know, God puts people in our lives that we can trust. But even when we know we can trust someone, that doesn't always make it easy. I think Uncle Ben was a little hesitant, if you could tell. And you know, it's just like your parents probably make you eat vegetables and your teacher might give you some difficult assignments, but you know <clears throat> they do these things because they want you to be healthy and to learn. And we can trust people who love us because we know they have our best interest in mind. In our, in our story, Mordecai and, and Esther trusted God <clears throat> that God was in control. It took great courage for Esther to go before the king without being asked. But her people needed her, and that's why she did it. If she didn't stand up for them and go before the king, they would be destroyed. And God had a plan for his people. And Esther got to have a front row seat and just seeing how God would do it. She was confident in God's good plan, even if it meant that she would have to die. God was committed to his promise to protect his people and save them from destruction. Do you remember the promise God made to Abraham many generations before? That's exactly right. God promised to bless the whole world through his family, and God would send the Messiah through the Jews. And even though they sinned against God and were unfaithful to him, God remained faithful to his promise. His love for his people was unconditional. You know, Paul wrote these words <clears throat> to the church in Corinth. He wanted to remind them of what it took, what it looks like to follow Jesus every day. It might seem odd that Paul tells people to grieve over their sin, but it's true. Sin separates us from God, and that should make us sad. But we can rejoice in knowing that Jesus came, has come to set us free. So this is our Bible verse for this month. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to, to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. 2 Corinthians 7.10. And we'll be learning more about what this means to us. So let's close in prayer. Father God, thank you for your word to us. As we read Esther's story, we remember how faithful you are. And even when we turn away from you, we praise you for your good plan to rescue us from our sin and bring us close to you again. Our sin makes us sad, Lord because it separates us from you. Please help us and forgive us and love us and help us to always obey you. In your son's name, amen. Amen, boys and girls. See you again next week. Bye-bye.